On behalf of Mozilla Tamil Nadu and Facebook Developer Circle, I'm pleased to welcome you all to our sixth webinar of Force Weeks. So this is an extended session of our webinar four, which was about uh, how JS works inside a modern web browser. Uh, we are going to have some uh, related topics related to that. To all the new buddies joining to us for the first time, I would like to briefly share a few words about Mozilla TN. Mozilla Tamil Nadu is a group of volunteers who are passionate about Mozilla-related technologies and various open source projects. They work with the goal of spreading technology to all extents. And this first week is initiated by this team. We invite subject matter experts and long-time contributors from different organizations who are interested to give back. In this series, we have uh, already conducted five successful webinars on different projects like Common Voice, Wikipedia, Wikicommon, and the last one was about uh, building your own Instagram AI filters and also the part one session of how JS works inside a modern web browsers. The recording of all these uh, webinars are available in the Mozilla TN's YouTube channel. So you guys can go and look into it if you have missed it. This is our sixth webinar and this is about how JS works inside modern web browsers and it is a part two session. We are happy to announce that even this is in accordance with in collaboration with um, Facebook Developer Circle. So Facebook Developer Circle is a free non-profit developer community that is directly supported by Facebook for learning and collaborating with other developers. It is a channel to learn about developer tools and Facebook products. Uh, they create active communities for any developer around the world to access information, share knowledge, and collaborate with other developers and communities led by the local community experts who are passionate about giving back. Coming to the uh, speaker of the day. So speaker of the day is Mr. Magesh, who has conducted our previous part one session. He is the lead of Facebook Developer Circle Chennai, and he has organized 50 plus events for both students and professionals over the last few years. He has worked in a lot of startups and SMEs and had about 10 years of experience overall as a software engineer. He has worked with consulting and product-based companies in the past, where he has developed application as a lead developer and deployed them to different cloud infrastructures. Without any further delay, I'll rush up through the certain guidelines that we follow during the webinar. First thing is, please to answer the polls that are shown during the event. This is just for our understanding. Second is that the session will last nearly for one and a half hours and we will have QA session after that. Third thing is, uh, it is a recorded session, so we encourage you to post your queries through the QA tab. QA tab will be uh, visible on the left side of your screen, so you can shoot your queries to us through the QA tab. In case, if you want to voice out your question, use the option raise hand as well as drop a message to us in QA tab stating that you want to voice out your question. Then we will make arrangements, like we will allow you to talk at the end of the session. I again repeat this point. If you raise your hand as well as put your uh, put as a message in the QA tab that you want to voice out your question, you will be given a chance to ask the question. But we encourage you to put it in QA tab. We will answer it appropriately. And the final point is that, uh, as I mentioned, like all our previous uh, webinars were recorded. Similarly, this is also a recorded session. This recording will be available in our uh, YouTube channel, Mozilla TN's official YouTube channel as well as in Facebook Developer Circle Chennai's official page uh, within a few days, maybe by Sunday evening or by Monday, you can get the recorded session there. So with this, without any further delay, I'll hand over it to our presenter. Hope you learn a lot in this. So Mahesh, please do take over. Sure. <clears throat> OK, let me uh, share my screen first. Okay, hey guys, welcome to the session. Um, I don't know if you guys were part of the uh, first session that I did, which was Fundamentals Basics. Um, like we were talking about a lot of things there. This session is just a um, continuation to that, uh, to add on and to talk about some important topics um, that we're going to see, right? Uh, so last time we were, in the last session, we were discussing about uh, JavaScript engine call stack and how the JavaScript 
kind of you know compiles the code you know interprets and compiles the code and all those things um, and we saw some very few example and similarly now today what we're going to do is uh, we are going to discuss about concepts like you know execution context scope scope chain um, global scope and etc but this time um, i have a lot of code for you like i have um, many code examples that we'll be looking at and then you will have to understand the code and give me the answer like what would be the output right uh, just hold on let me check are you able to hear me clearly guys just can you um, give me a heads up if you can hear me just comment saying yes everything is clear right okay cool okay awesome right so this time we will uh, discuss uh, code also so we'll be seeing a lot of code and then why by understanding the code and how it works you will be able to grasp the um, concept of you know scope and etc context or whatever that we are going to discuss today okay so moving on i think uh, you already know about me uh, right my name is magesh and i am a consultant at uh, serin technologies and um, i right now also lead the facebook developer circle community and what i do right now is you know i've been doing a lot of development before uh, my current job i used to be a developer and then i've been an entrepreneur before where i used to run my own consulting firm but then uh, recently in the last one, one year or so i've been um, predominantly into training and mentoring people i'm a dev coach basically right now so i help developers learn programming and get to the next level right so that's a little about me and then today we have some important concepts to look at so i would like you to you know concentrate on the code and then see um, how you know you are able to understand if you are not able to understand something you can immediately ask me and i will you know go over it again so it's really helpful if you can understand all these concepts really well if you are a javascript programmer or maybe you are a front end developer who is working with um, applications like you know react uh, framework like react or angular and etc right so when you understand things in depth it kind of helps you write better code you don't have to go and search stack overflow all the time you will understand how it works and when things go wrong you will be able to say okay i know where exactly this went wrong because i understand how the browser works or how the javascript engine works right so that's the reason why we are doing this uh, session so hope you guys are excited today <laughs> i don't know if you guys know this chandler dance i like it so all right so let's start with the um, the coding right so can someone tell me like what is the output of this you can put it in the question qa box like we'll use the uh, qa box for this also what do you think is the um, output for this one okay just try to guess it even if it's wrong it's never mind you know because i'm going to talk about this i'm going to explain to you how this works and why this works like this anyone then uh, guess someone please mm. okay undefined and defined fiber okay mm. okay anyone else i think uh, sandeep arvind then suresh kumar has given a answer here yeah okay we'll look into that okay mm. so i we are going to talk about you know hoisting right i don't know if you guys already know about hoisting we might have discussed a little bit about it in the last session but i want to go in deep and um, you know show you how Uh, these things work so when you understand hoisting you'll be able to quickly say you know hey i know this is the answer uh, for this thing okay, so what is the definition for hoisting in javascript right uh, according to mozilla's uh, web docs you have this one variable declaration is moved to the top of the function or global code okay a bit confusing not very clear um, let's look at w3 schools definition hoisting is javascript's default behavior of moving the declaration to the top okay that's what w3 school says but we'll see how it works okay just to understand you know it is like moving your declaration to the top of the code okay no matter where you have written your declaration it could be a variable declaration or it could be a function declaration but wherever it is written it will automatically be moved to the top not physically but moved to top right concept wise so we were discussing about javascript engine last time uh, so it has i might have told you this right uh, it has two different stages or two different phases one is called the memory creation phase and the second is the execution phase so there are certain things that happens in the memory allocation phase and then certain things that happens in the execution phase 
Just remember that. So in hoisting, first let's talk about how variables are hoisted, right? So if you look at this one, uh, what will be the output of this, right? So th here I have not defined the variable x at all. So here, obviously, there will be an error, right? So it's a reference error. X is not defined because there's no variable anywhere. But let's say I change this, okay? So usually what we think is, you know, var x should be on top of console.log so that, you know, I uh, console.log will work without a problem because var x is defined on top, right? But here, in this case, even though var x is defined below the execution code, you know, this is the code that is getting executed, but the definition, the declaration part is below it. But still, what happens is during the memory allocation phase in the JavaScript engine, this var x is being moved to the top of this code, right? So technically, uh, this var will be pulled to the top. So automatically, this code will work. So console.log x will not throw error because s x will be defined. Okay, but we have not assigned a variable to this x. Okay, so there is a declaration. We have only declared it, but we have not assigned a value to the x variable, which means by default it is um, assigned to undefined. So x will be undefined at this particular stage, right? So you'll get undefined um, error. I'm sorry, undefined message in this output. Okay, so undefined is an actual value. So by default, if nothing is added to it, it is being added as undefined. Okay, so it will be like this, where x will be equal to undefined, just like how you would normally assign a variable, a value to a variable, right? So by default, JavaScript engine does this thing. When it finds a variable does not have value, it will automatically assume that undefined is going to be the value, right? So before hoisting, our code looked like this, but after hoisting, in the perspective of our JavaScript engine, it's going to be like this. When the JavaScript engine sees a the code, it's going to see it like this because it'll automatically say, oh, okay, man, I'm going to pull this variable X to the top like this. And then now next thing is the execution code. So whatever variable that you have, no matter where you have placed that variable in your file, if you use this var keyword and you have de declared something, it will automatically be pulled to the top of the file, okay, the top of your code automatically. And then comes the execution code, whatever. It could be a function execution, it could be a console log or whatever it might be. All this happens during the memory creation phase. That is the first phase of your JavaScript engine, right? So now, if you see this example, so what will be the output here? Console.log uh, x, and then below that I have defined a value. Can, can you tell me like what will be the uh, answer for this one? Someone says 10, someone says undefined. Okay, uh, no, actually, Yes, undefined is the correct, actually, right? Because what happens is um, variable var x is being moved to the top, but not the assignment part. The right side is not going to be moved. Only the left side var x will be moved to the top during hoisting. Okay, that's something that you need to understand clearly. The JavaScript will not let the assignment happen during the hoisting stage, okay? When hoisting is happening, it is only going to take, say, uh, you know, hey, variable x is defined, that's all. It is not going to give it a value yet, but it will say that, okay, variable x is available to available to us in the memory, that's it, right? It's simply like, you know, typing var x semicolon, that's it. So equal to will happen later, not in the uh, memory allocation state, but it happens in, during the execution states. So what happens here is, so at this point, when you run the console.log x, has a variable x will not throw error saying you know hey it's undefined or it's it will not throw a reference error saying you know hey i don't know what x means it has x there but it is not def not assigned to a va actual value so instead it'll be assumed as undefined so here you'll get undefined as the uh, output right so initializations are not hoisted it's something that you should remember okay so whenever you hoist uh, only the left side, the variable x is being hoisted, but this right side, what we call as the initialization part, is not hoisted at all, right? So always you will get this undefined error if you try to uh, print something like this, okay? Because in the second line, you're passing this assignment. So in the first line, when console.log is called, there is only x um, declared, but not initialized. X initialization happens in the second line, actually, okay? So that is one thing that you need to understand. Hope you are clear with this, right? Right. So this is this is the, about the variable hoisting. So 
Next, think about this one. Now what happens? Now tell me what would be the output for this. Let's go. Take a guess. Undefined 10. What do you think? Undefined and 10. Undefined and 10. Yeah, correct. Why? Because when first time when the console log is called, um, the assignment is not happening. But even though the hoisting has happened, assignment part is yet to happen, right? So a variable x is hoisted without the right side, which means equal to 10 is not assigned yet. So x is right now assumed as undefined. So first uh, console log will print undefined. But when the second console log is about to execute, you will have uh, this assignment happened already. So now x has a value 10. So here it will throw, I mean, it will give you uh, 10 as the output, right? So I hope uh, you are clear with the variable hoisting part, right? And also, do you know, uh, we talked about the execution uh, stack before, right? Call stack in JavaScript, right? So how does call stack happen? Like, you know, JavaScript engine uh, has two different phases. One is memory creation. Second is the execution phase. So uh, whatever you do in the execution phase is going to be added to the call stack. So anything that is declared or, you know, uh, allocating memory is not going to go into the call stack okay call stack is nothing but a stack a box which has uh, which is empty by default but then uh, during execution it will push uh, functions one by one on top of each other right and the last one to go in will come out first that is how uh, the call stack works okay so we discussed about this in detail so i'm not going to go into the call stack in detail but if you look at this code and think how the call stack is going to work so first this particular code console.log is being um, a push to the call stack, right? So even before we go to the call stack, first the JavaScript engine goes through the memory allocation phase, right? So during the memory allocation phase, it is going to take var x and say it is going to undefined. It is going to mark it as undefined during the memory allocation phase, okay? So now that we are done with the memory allocation phase, JavaScript engine goes into the execution phase next. So in the execution phase, you have the call stack, right? So it is going to take first line, right? This is a function invocation. So all the function invocation will go into the call stack. So first, this line will go into the call stack, and then it gets executed. It will say, OK, now the x value at this point is what? Undefined. So it will just print an undefined message, and then it will be popped out. Immediately after invocation of a function, that particular uh, thing will get popped off the call stack. Now again, the call stack is empty. Now then this, this line is going to be pushed into the call stack. So now when this is pushed, uh, this gets modified in the memory. So x is, go is going to be referenced with 10 right? So during this time. So then what happens? X now will be printed as 10. Again, because this is the last thing that goes into the call stack, right? OK, cool. So moving on. OK, so we've uh, what we have learned so far is first is JavaScript engine has two phase memory creation phase and execution phase. So we talked about variable declaration, right? So variable declaration was hoisted, actually. And uh, during hoist, hoisting, there was no right-hand side, which means there was no assignment. So the initialization of the variable happens at the later stage, not during the first stage, right? And then reassignment is also there. The reassignment and all happens after that. Like when you want to modify a variable, all those things will happen during the execution side, OK? OK, let's go through one more test. OK, tell me what is the output of this one now? Just take a guess. Undefined, undefined fiber. OK. Aravind, Sandeep, and Shahul Hamid all have same answers. Saravana also has same answer. OK, good, guys. Let's see. OK. Yes, you're correct. Right? Which means you understood the concept well, right? So what happens here is, first when console log is going to work, we have not defined this variable x. But since this variable x, uh, var x was there below, du during memory creation phase, this got hoisted, which means this particular thing is moved to the top automatically. right? So when it moves to the top, it is uh, un assumed as undefined, right? like I told you. So first, it will print undefined. right? So second time, uh, here, even now, still we only have var x. We haven't assigned anything yet. So now again, the second console log is 
uh, executed, still the variable x is undefined. So when you just say var x, it means it is by default undefined. It is declared, it has a place in the memory, but it doesn't point to a value yet. So still it's going to print undefined. But then after that, you have uh, you know declared a variable. I mean, you mean uh, you are initializing x with five. So now when the console log fires, uh, the value will be updated as five, right? So that's it. It's a simple stuff when you look at uh, variable hoisting. So now similarly, let's go into function hoisting. Let's see how function hoisting works. Now, like take a guess now. How how will this work? What is the output of this? Come on, guys. Let's guess. Take a look at it and then tell me how this is going to work. Some of you might understand um, function hoisting already, or maybe you might have some assumptions. Either way, you can uh, tell me what will be the output. Hello and hey, says Aravind. Mm -hmm. Anyone else? Hello and hey, okay. Shahul says. Okay. Chakravarti says hey, okay. Sandeep also says hey, okay. Chakravarti says hello now. Dude, <laughs> you're changing your answer from hey to hello, huh? okay. And uh, Sarana is asking undefined. Okay, you have uh, confusions. Let's look at it. Okay, so now what happens is um, here, let's say, first thing what happens is a variable to be um, moved to the top, right, during hoisting. So here we don't have any global variables, so nothing to move up, but we have this function here, right? So now this function is going to be moved to the top, even though we have called this uh, function, I mean, invoke the function even before it is declared. But uh, this JavaScript engine will automatically move this function declaration to the top. So this will not throw error saying, you know, hey, I don't know where say hello function is. Uh, in other languages, it might throw error. If you do this in Ruby or Python, it will throw error uh, because there you don't have this concept of hoisting. But here you have this hoisting, so it will not throw error. Instead, it will have the reference to this function by default, right? So this is there in the, this is a function which is hoisted now. Now inside this, if you go inside this function, you have uh, another function declaration, okay, which is already on the top. Um, so this function will be there. And then you're calling this particular function. The above function is being called in the next line, which is line number six, right? And then you have another function, hello, this thing. So now what happens is within this function, you have two different function with the same name, right? So what happens is it's going to be hoisted. Both of these function is going to be hoisted. First function, this one will be hoisted. And then immediately this one is hoisted, which means this previous function is replaced with this one. So guess what the output will be, right? Hey, right? Hey will be the output. Because first when this function got declared, and then this second function with the same name got hoisted, it is going to replace this name, right? Previous function is gets automatically replaced because both are using the same name. So then um, this final output will be printed for this particular execution in line number six, right? So this is the this is the clarification that you need to know, right? So let me let me go over it again, okay? So you might be wondering like, what the hell is happening here, man? Yeah, crazy, right? So this is this is the reason why some people find uh, JavaScript to be crazy. Like, what is this, man? Like, how am I able to access the function before defining it? How am I able to access the variable before defining it? So this is really crazy stuff, right? Voodoo stuff. So anyway. Mm. So just remember, you know, remember that there is something called as hoisting in JavaScript, and that is going to, uh, you know, make things different here, right? So what happens here is first in the first line when you call say hello, even though say hello function is not defined before that, anyway hoisting will make this possible. So for hoisting moves this function to to the top of say hello function in line number one, right? So it will not throw error. Instead, it will run this function, and when uh, inside this function, when this function was declared. There is another function called hello, which got declared, okay, during hoisting, okay? This is also hoisted inside this function. This function is within another function, right? So this will get hoisted inside that function. And then hello is being called. Then there's another function, right? So now this function will also be hoisted within the parent function, right? So when this function gets hoisted, since it has the same name as the previous function, which was hoisted, so it is getting replaced. Okay, so now according to the JavaScript engine, it only cares about this function. It only has one function right now with this console log. It, it has forgotten about the previous function because it's replaced. There's no reference to it. 
So when hello gets executed in the execution phase, you you'll see that console.log hey is being printed, right? So that is how this thing works. Fine. Okay. So it's, it's exactly like the same thing, you know, like what you saw in the variable. Uh, same thing happens in the function hoisting also. Right? Same logic applies. I'm just moving forward here. I've already explained this. Um, this moving. So what happened there is um, just a summarization. During the memory creation phase, the ASP engine recognized the function declaration. Right? How does it declare? How does it recognize the function declaration? Is by the function keyword. Right? So when it sees this function keyword, it is recognizing it as a function declaration, and then it is hoisted. But if you have declared a function in a different way without using this function or keyword, then it will not get hoisted. Okay. So that's why I could access say hello in the previous function prior to its declaration in the execution phase. You know that. Okay. Um, let's see this one. Okay. I think this is also not required. I mean, you understand this already. Let's keep moving on. I have a lot of example here, small stuff. Okay, so here, um, one second, let me, okay. So here the thing is, say hello is called, right? But the problem is um, here, I'm not using the function keyword. So when the JavaScript engine is going to scan down here to see if there's any function or variable, it is only seeing this as a variable. It doesn't recognize this as a function. Instead, it's going to see this as a variable. And then it's going to do what it does with the variable hoisting, right? Uh, it didn't have a function keyword. I mean, the line didn't start with the function keyword, so it doesn't uh, think that this is a function. Instead, it does what a variable, uh, you know, should do in a hoisting stage. So it will just take this var, say hello, and assign it to undefined, and that's it. It's done. It doesn't care about this function at all now, because this is a this is how you define function as an expression in Java, right? This is another way of declaring function. But these kind of functions will never be hoisted, right? So what happens here? Say hello function is called before its declaration, and there is no function here, okay? Because uh, JavaScript engine knows only var variable say hello is there, but not function say hello. So it's going to, right? Doesn't start with the function keyword, so it doesn't know that this is a particular uh, function. So it thinks this is just a variable. Now when say hello is called, it's going to search for it in the memory and say a type error. It's going to throw a type error saying, hey, I don't find this function here. That is the problem with this particular code. Okay, why? Because this function is declared as the function as expression. So when the line starts, if it starts with function keyword, then it is hoisted. If it doesn't start with the function keyword, like this, you know, by using var or maybe you use arrow function or something like that, that will never get hoisted. I mean, that will not work. Okay, type error. Uh, all right, so you understand the di difference between a function declaration and function as expression, right? So you need to know, understand that. So function declaration starts with the function keyword, followed by the name of the function. In our case, it was say hello. And then there was a block of code to be executed and the function is called, right? Like for example, console.log was inside it, right? Like this, this is how a, a normal function is declared. So this kind of function will be hoisted, but not the function as expression. That will never get hoisted, okay? We can skip this part. Um, okay, so next again, we'll try this. Um, so this, I think, we have already discussed, right? Same example where we got hey as an output. Okay, now try this one. Here, what is the difference here? Or, or tell me what will be the output here? Okay, Sarana has asked a question before. I'm just seeing it. Yeah, hoisting happens during the memory allocation phase. Man, uh, hoisting always happens during a memory allocation phase, not during the execution phase. Right? Okay. So Vijay says hello is the output, and then Sandeep says type error. Chakravarti says hello. Sahul says hello. Okay, type error and hello is what people think. Okay. Error. Okay. Let's let's look into that. Okay. So here again, we have a function call before before declaration, right? Uh, but then we have a function 
with the uh, function keyword in front, which means it will get hoisted, right? If it was not starting with function keyword, then it would not hoist. But in this case, we have a function keyword, so it will get hoisted, right? So say hello will not throw error in this case. It's going to be called. But then uh, inside say hello, we have this first function, function hello, right? And then uh, there is another function which is using var, okay? Function as expression, which means this particular one is not going to be hosted hoisted, right? So this function will not be pulled up to replace the previous function, right? Uh, so JavaScript engine will just ignore this uh, seventh line, right? Thinking that this is just a, a variable. It's, it doesn't think that this is a function, right? In a pre, like uh, we saw in the previous example. So this previous function is still there in the memory. It is not replaced like what we saw earlier, right? So now when hello executes, what will happen? It is going to print hello. So hello, because this one, is working, right? Because this particular code did not get hoisted, so we are not coming here, right? So this function is hoisted, and this is going to get executed when hello works. So hello will be the output and not this. Not hey, because it started with a var, so it will not come to the, maybe if I, uh, if I call this hello, which is in line number six right now, after line number nine, then, then it might work, then it might print hey. But since I called it even before seventh line, so this is going to take the previous one, right? So that is the difference. This is function hoisting, right? There's no error though. Some people said it's uh, error. So there's no error because it's working fine. But the output that we got was hello, right? I hope you understand. If you don't understand, you can uh, put up a comment there saying, you know, I can explain it again. Otherwise, I will continue. The variable hello will be hoisted, right? Yeah, uh, Sarana, Sarana is saying that variable hello will be hoisted. Yes, variable hello will be hoisted, okay. But variable hello will be hoisted as undefined value. But here, what are we doing? We are not, we are not calling the variable here, right? We are calling the function here. So if I said if I didn't use this open close braces, then it might print the uh, variable. Uh, but since I'm using this, right, function, so it is going to look for a function. So it doesn't care about the variable anymore. We are just calling a function here. Right. So here, okay. Let's think about this. Okay. You said that variable um, hello will be hoisted, but what did I say? When, when variable is getting hoisted, only the left side is hoisted. Right. Right hand side, the assignment part is not hoisted at all. So variable hello is hoisted with the value undefined set. Right. So hello, so value will be undefined in this case. But we are not printing the value of variable hello, instead we are calling the function hello. So here, this is not a function. Line number seven is not treated as a function. Line number three is treated as function, right? So that particular thing got executed. I hope, Sarana, you are clear right now. Okay. Yes, var variable will still get hoisted, yes. Suresh also says, right? So yeah, it will get hoisted, it will be assigned to undefined, but we are not using it. We are not using the variable value at all here. We are only calling this function here. Okay, instead, if I say console.log print hello, then then it this uh, it might have given un undefined as an output, right? But I'm not calling the variable here. I'm calling the function here. So it is going to print this one, the, uh, execute this particular function, which is why I have hello here, okay? I know this concept is kind of, you know, a bit of confusing, but you need to look at it again and again to understand it. Since it is hoisted and calling the undefined will throw error, right? No, no, no. See, um, I'll tell you, there's two different things, right? So var hello is assumed as a variable, okay? It, it knows that this is not a function. And this one is a function. So now, here when you're doing this, when you have this open close braces, it knows for sure that this is a function execution, right? So it's going to go and search for the function named hello. It's not searching for the variable named hello, right? So it knows clearly that we are searching for hello function. So then it will not uh, find this particular variable. Even though it is hoisted and it has a value undefined, even though this variable is available in memory, still it is not going to look for this because it's looking for a function here. Whenever you have an open close braces like this in line number six, okay, it means you are calling a function. So it'll only go and search for function like this, right? So it finds only this. There's no other conflict here it automatically finds this function and says, oh yeah, I got a function, let me just execute it. It is not going to think this as a function, it is a variable, right? There's a difference. We are not calling a variable here. We are calling a function, right? So that is the that is the confusion, yeah. got it? Cool. 
awesome so let's move on okay one more challenge let's <laughs> try this okay i'm just going to you know exercise give some exercise to your brain to try and make you understand like there's no way you cannot get out of this session confused without understanding this concept today you have to understand whatever i'm telling you right that's why i have so many examples so what is the output of this come on let's see folks think 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 yes undefined says vijay prasant sandeep says hey come on guys who else suresh says undefined yeah come on come on type preference says jiva okay let's see even while i was going through these concepts i was also confused like i had to read through again and again to figure out what is happening here to understand uh, the hoisting and all those things better mm -hmm. hey says sai padu type error says sarana not a function say hello sarana kumar okay thank you guys thank you for uh, thinking and replying back awesome so let's see what's the difference here right <laughs> so the thing is uh, first you have this say hello function in line number 1 and then it's going to look and it going to it can search for variable and function that has to be hoisted but here look at it carefully there's only this var okay this is not considered as a function instead it's considered as a variable right a variable so variable is going to be hoisted and the right hand side part this right side part is completely ignored okay uh, during hoisting i'm saying during hoisting that is ignored so variable say hello is declared which means it's hoisted and it has a value assigned as undefined that's it and then uh, say hello is going to be called right so this is just a variable so what happens function call before declaration function declaration is here but it's variable is hoisted but not the function so it, it doesn't find the function here so when you call say hello as a function invocation it is searching for function say hello which is not uh, found anywhere so it throws a type error right yeah that's correct so those those who said type error is correct <laughs> right just look at it again right so first what happens here is variable when you use when the thing starts with the var var it assumes that this is a will and then it's going to only hoist it as a variable hoisting right so it will do whatever is going to happen inside a variable hoisting process which is take the variable pull it and put it on the top and assign it to undefined right so say hello will be counted as a variable which has a value equal to undefined and this right side part is completely ignored during the hoisting stage during the execution stage when you call this before the function declaration right so what happens is it will say okay there's no function which was hoisted because we never saw anything that started with the function keyword so function was never to be found or function was not hoisted when this called so it throws an error saying you know hey i don't find a function call say hello but in case if i had moved this function on line number 1 to below line number 10 if i had a line number 11 and i added this uh, say hello below that right then it would have worked fine because uh, this thing would have been assigned during execution stage and it will work just fine but now since it's not there it's above that so only this part was hoisted and this part was wasn't hoisted right so it is going to throw error saying there's no function right so that's the that's the difference with this particular uh, thing okay i hope you understand this okay understand function hoisting again <laughs> one more test take take a guess let's see if you can figure this out let's see print your answers like type your answers folks hello okay sarana says hello hello yes jiva says hello type error says sandeep okay so i'm going to rush a little faster so that you know we will be able to complete lot hello okay vijay prasad okay let's go faster hmm so here what happens is you see the function call there right and then what happens next again we see a function declaration which starts with the function keyword which means this will get pulled to the top which means this is hoisted now right so this function is hoisted very good function will be hoisted say hello is called output will be hello so why output is going to be hello is because 
when you go into this into this function first uh, thing that you find is a var hello here again during the hosting stage var hello will be undefined but then during execution stage this right side thing will be assigned to it and then after that after this thing get, got executed then we are calling hello if we had called this hello before line number 3 then it wouldn't have worked right it would have thrown it would have said you know hey function is not there right but since i'm using this i'm putting this right below the uh, function now it doesn't matter because now we don't have to rely on hosting because this function is already declared in these previous lines and then you get to this line so it knows uh, after hosting and after this uh, execution this thing was uh, assigned to it then when you call hello it knows hello to be printed right that's all this part is also again will be carried top this will be pulled to the top but again this is var hello so it will be undefined right side part is ignored here uh, and we are not we are not yet into this area so we are still executing in line number 6 so we haven't gone to the line number 7 yet so we don't care about those hey hey is not printed because at this point right in this point in line number 6 you only have uh, this particular function available to you and that console will be immediately printed right so if i move this hello function invocation to line number uh, below line number 9 then you know this might come into the picture hey will be printed because this will get replaced this function will be executed and that will get replaced okay i'm just giving you these exercises to confuse you a little bit and also make sure that you are understanding it okay i think uh, you understood it i think we can skip this part otherwise um, we'll keep on going you can think about it right so we'll get into uh, scope right so what is a what is a scope so understanding hosting we're talking about these concepts because it's very important to understand hosting and scope so that you Uh, will be able to write safe code and debug faster so like whenever there's an error you don't have to go and search for stack overflow answer instead you will figure out oh yes i know this particular code is hosted and this is not and then this is the scope of my code so i kind of know what goes wrong here right so you don't have to do this you will you can avoid this while debugging the code you don't have to hit the computer or get frustrated that's the reason why uh, we are doing this session right so scope in javascript is uh, defines which variable and functions you have access to at a particular point right depending on where you are within the code right when i say line number 6 if you are executing in line number 6 then you need to see what are the variables and function that are available to you at line number 6 like when you are at line number 6 so that is how it works scope is working based on that right just you know just grasp this again scope in javascript defines which variable and function you have access to depending on where you are within your code okay so basically scope determines the accessibility of a variable or a function in a particular area of your code right if you are in line number 6 let's say in line number 6 i'd have access to uh, function a and line number 6 does not have access to line uh, function b which is coming later right so there are some uh, steps defined in the scope so this is how it is scope right so first thing when you start a file let's say i open a a javascript file and then i haven't written any single line of code by default it has the global scope okay so global scope is there by default into the call stack the first thing that goes into the call stack is the global scope right global context right so by default global context is there and then if i create a function now if i create a function a function scope is created right so every function will have its own scope right if anything is outside of the function which will be in global scope but if i create a function that will that will have its own scope which we call as a function scope or the local scope and then there is block scope which is of less vitality because block is only used for very few things like you know if case if and else statement when you are writing if and else statement or while statement things like that right and we don't uh, put our function inside these blocks so we don't have a problem with block block the scope comes into the question only when you are using let and const right so when you are using var very instead of var if you use let and const that is when um, those two variable has scope when you put it inside a block okay we'll discuss about these things again you know global scope function scope block scope and then you have your code inside right let's see some example and then figure out what it is okay so here if you look at this code uh, here variable greet is equal to hello right so this is defined in the global scope which means it's outside it's not inside a function it is in the global scope when it's in the outside right so this becomes part of the global scope and then we have a function now when the function is created it's creating its own scope right there's a new scope that is being added now which we call as the function scope 
So whatever you put inside this function is inside that different scope, right? So say hi function will have its own scope. And then now these two functions are called in the uh, global scope. Now it's not inside the function, it is outside. So it is in the global scope, right? So what will be the output of this? Just take a quick guess and tell me what is the output here? Hello. Let's see, any other answers? Hello, okay. Hello, hello. <laughs> okay. Okay, yes. So var greet is in global scope. Memory allocation phase, uh, this thing gets pulled to the top, right? Uh, function is pulled to the top. And then in execution phase, first thing happens is say hi function. So say hi function is already in the memory, right? So hey, say hi is executed. And then console log is executed. So when say hi is executed, you have uh, one colon uh, greet, right? In the previous example, see this part. One colon greet will be printed. So greet value will be taken from the global scope. Hello, which is the previous scope, right? It can, it has access. This function scope has access to its parent scope, which is the global scope in this case, right? So it is going to print this message, one colon, and then greet value is hello, right? And then the second one, two is going to be Great. Hello and hello, right? So not just hello, hello, it is going to print along with this number, one colon, two colon also, right? But anyways, you got it right, yes. The ones who said hello, hello is also closely correct, yes. Mm. Right, so that, that gives you an idea, right? So you have, you are able to access this particular variable, which is, even though it's in the function scope, it can, it has access to the parent scope, which is the global scope, right? This variable was defined in the global scope, which is the parent for this function, which is accessible here, right? So when I call say hi function, it got, it printed hello. And then second here, again, when I'm calling it inside, whether I call the greet variable from inside a function or outside a function, it still has access to the main parent uh, global scope, right? That is one advantage of doing things in the global scope. But you should also be careful when you declare variables in global scope because it has access to everywhere. So it is not uh, deleted from the memory at all. Okay, so that is done. And then again, if you look at this, this is another uh, example here, what happens? Um, let's say memory creation phase function is there. Um, so we don't have to worry about it because it's anyway on the top. Now variable here is local scoped. Okay, this variable is inside a function and not inside a global scope, right? So this variable is only accessible inside the function and not available outside the function, right? So when next, when I call say hi, console log, I mean, say hi is executed. And then inside say hi, console log will be executed. And then the line number six gets executed, right? So first when this console log gets executed, it has this value hello here available, right? So it will print hello. Oh, I'm sorry, I got a little confused. Okay. Mm -hmm. Actually, when, when this hello is getting printed, okay, so this particular thing will give you an error actually, just uh, hold on. Um, I think I missed one point here. Okay. Okay, I think it was correct. First one was hello, right? Yes, it's correct. Second one only was going to give you error. I think I got a little confused. Okay, I'll explain it again. So what happens is when you call a function, say hi, and like I said, you know, this greet variable was inside the function and was not found outside, right? So when I'm calling this console log inside the function, it is able to get the value hello, so it is printed. But the second time when I'm consoling, uh, using console log outside of the function, right? So now the variable is not in the global scope, right? So it is only available inside the function and not outside the function. So this greet will say, hey, I'm not able to find this variable called greet. Where is it? It's going to throw error. That's the, that's the problem here. Right, so reference error for greet during the second stage. Okay, this is because of scoping, right? So if I move this var to the top of this thing on line number one before the function declaration, then it will work. Then it will say, oh yeah, now I see greet in the global uh, scope, so I am able to find it. But instead, if you have var inside the uh, function, then it will not be able to find it because as I told you before, function has its own scope, right? So with uh, anything that is inside the function scope will not be available outside, which is why this thing is throwing error. I hope you understood that, right? 
right cool the global scope is the outermost scope right predefined even before you write a single line of code even before you write a single line of code this out global scope exists you only have one global scope for a particular program right javascript but you can have multiple um, you know function scope you can have multiple function scope you can have multiple uh, block scope but there is only one global scope which is what i wanted to say this this is getting created automatically by javascript engine right so now if we open a developer tool okay you will be able to see this um this all on let's do this right here okay are you able to see my developer tools no hold on then um i think okay there's a okay let me stop and share the whole window that is when you'll be able to see it hold on um there's a small problem with this okay i'm sharing the entire window now now you'll be able to see it right so now can you see me see my this thing you can see yes okay perfect mm. okay so here if i go to sources um right so i don't even have to do this i'll go to the console here let's say here see in the console now i have not written any code there's no code at all inside this console right but even before i write any single line of code there is this global scope automatically available there javascript engine does that you know it initializes uh, with the uh, global uh, scope already and it has some information inside it so for example if i do window window object is available it's a global object so when i type window you see this object is available already did i create this object no i didn't but this was available in the default global scope right similarly this value is also available inside it so now this here points to the default window object which is the global object here right i didn't do this right i never wrote this code i didn't write this value and i didn't write create the window object with all these values inside this is all automatically given by the javascript engine here right so this is how did we get this information this is all there by default right so when you are inside the global scope all these things happen automatically right so global scope will bring you all these things right so let's try uh, creating a global variable that is also part of this so um, let me clear this so like window if i say var um, name equal to magesh right so when i print name magesh is there so this variable is available in the global context right so global scope so if i do window dot name i'll be able to find this right so window object will have this actually let me print the window if you go look into this um, name will be fine somewhere else. right so this is getting added to the windows global object which will be available throughout this file i can access it anywhere i want because this is a global object right okay oh shit there's a lot for me to search through uh in it's kind of difficult to find this okay but if you search through you'll be able to find that okay i don't know if i don't want to waste time here so let me skip this part so if you want to just try that just to window dot name which will show auto complete right which means the name is present inside the uh, object so that is why i'm getting this value right so all these things happen during that stage right now right, let me stop and share again using the tab so that will be easier for you all right perfect okay so now global variables right so var in this code if you look at this code var greet equal to hello is in the global scope right because it's outside of the function it's not inside any function or it's not inside any block so it's automatically available in the global scope right so whenever some variable is in the global scope it will automatically be part of the window object also so i can do it i can access it using greet just put a print greet or i can just call window dot greet either way i'll be able to access this variable because it's in the global scope right then what happens is i'm trying to create a function here change greet okay uh, so what now what happens is here i'm printing the greet okay so when 
when you create a function, I told you that function also creates a, another local scope below the global scope, right? So function has a separate scope now within the global scope, right? And this function scope also has a reference back to its parent scope, which is the global scope. Okay, so that is why inside this function, I will be able to access things from its parent scope, right? There is something called a scope chain. We'll talk about it a little later, but this is how it is, right? So there's a scope chain. So all these scopes are connected. Global scope is connected to the local scope, which is why I can access this greet variable, even though it's not inside this function, it is coming from the previous. So what basically happens here is, this JavaScript engine will search for this value inside this function and say, hey, there's no variable called greet inside this function. Hmm, what do I do? Then it says, okay, let's go one step up and see if the parent uh, has any item about this, right? So any information about this. So he goes to the previous scope, which is the global scope here in this case, right? And then he's able to find it and say, ah, yes, now I understand. Uh, greet is available in the parent scope. So, and then it will print it, right? If it's not present even here, then it will try to go even up right? It'll go one step up again and search the variable greet. So it'll keep on going. Let's say you have nested functions, like, you know, there's a function under another inside another function and another function inside that, like that you have a chain of function, then this is what happens. It will first look into the local function. If the variable is not found, it'll go one step up. And then not found, again, go one step up. Not found, again, go one step up until it reaches the global scope, right? Which is the outermost of the code. Until then, it's going to keep on searching like that, right? So now it accesses the so the thing here is it is able to access this variable from the global scope and it can also modify that, right? When you use greet equal to hey, I'm modifying the global variable, right? That is another problem with global variable. It can be accessed within any function and I can modify it in any function, which is why you need to use it very carefully, right? So anybody, any function can uh, modify the particular variable, which is kind of dangerous, right? So. Uh, but it's done for a better use case. So in, look at this, okay? I'm not using var greet here. I'm just using greet here, right? So if, if I use var greet here, then it will create a new variable within this function, right? If I say var greet equal to hey, then it means it is creating a new variable that is only available within this function, right? So I'm not using the var keyword here. So that is one common mistake that people make, right? Sometimes by mistake, I add a var here, thinking that this is going to access the, uh, the variable from the global scope, but no, it will not work if I put a var here. So when you're accessing the global variable, you should just use greet, that's it, don't use var inside. Because if you use var, it means you're declaring a new, fresh new variable, right? So now use greet equal to hey, and I'm modifying it, okay? And then now when I say greet, you will be able to still access it, right? Because the global variable is modified to hey now. And again, if I come out of the function scope, and now if I still use greet, I am able to get the modified value here also, right? I can access it from outside, okay? So right now, uh, okay, in this execution point, like if you think about how the JavaScript engine executes, uh, here, when it comes to this point, it doesn't have the changed value, okay? Let's think about how this thing executes, right? First of all, first it looks at line number one, and then it's going to say, okay, this is a variable, and it declares the variable with hello, right? In hoisting, of course, it is going to declare it as undefined, and then, when it comes to execution part, it's going to assign it to hello. And then during hoisting part, this function gets hoisted, right? This function is defined already. And then next is console log greet, okay? So now at this point, greet variable is not modified because I have not called this function yet. I have not called this function yet. So at this point, when it executes to line number eight, greet, fun greet thing will still refer to hello, right? So here, hello will be printed. But then what I'm doing in the next line, I'm calling change greet function. So when I call this function, when I execute this function, that is when these code will get executed. And during this time, this greet is getting modified. So after that, if I type console.log greet, now you see the modified value. See, that is why your output is coming like this. You know, hello, hello, and hey, hey, right? So you do, you, this all depends upon the scope. You need to understand the scope correctly for you to get this properly, right? So first thing is defining a global variable, hello, right, in global scope. And then function is declared, okay? Function is declared but not called yet, right? Which means code inside the function is yet to be executed. This is not getting executed, which means the greet inside this particular uh, code is not executed in this point, right? We are only declaring the function. We are not executing anything inside. So the global variable is still not modified. 
right? So I'm calling this function next, console.log. So now this create function will just print the first word, hello, because it's not modified at this point. But then what happens is I'm going to call change greet. Now when I call change greet, that is when these lines get executed and now the variable gets modified. So when I call the next thing, okay? So when this function is called, what happens? This gets, this gets printed, line number four gets printed, and then the variable gets modified, and then line number six gets printed, and then finally it comes to line number 10, and this gets printed, right? But now when this gets printed, it is going to have the modified value, not the original value, right? That is how it is. You're able to understand? Okay. So uh, Maharish, Maharishi asked a question, global scope in Node.js, huh? okay, in Node.js environment, you have a global object called global, right? It doesn't have window object there. So you automatically have a object called global. There also you have a global context, um, but window won't be available because it's not a browser. So you don't have a window object, but you will still have a global object. You can do global dot something, right? It will be able to access that. Same thing, no, slight difference, but not, a, but not entirely different. That is how Node.js works. So now, local scope is any scope created within the global scope, I said, right? So what we did was inside a global scope, we created a function scope, right? So every time a new function is declared, a new local scope gets created and variables declared inside the function belongs to that unique scope. So if there's any uh, variable inside my function, it's going to be available only within that function. I can't use that outside of the function, right? But if I had a variable in a global scope that is outside, that can be used inside the child function inside the local scope okay all right so function scope again so here when you're declaring a function this creates a new scope right this creates a new scope and this creates a new variable inside the function so this is a local variable which is only available within the function it's not a uh, global variable it's a local variable so you cannot access this outside of this function right so this this gets stored in the memory first of all right so this gets stored and then uh, this is getting stored. But now only when I call say hi, this thing gets executed first of all, right? So when say hi executes, what happened? It will be able to print this value of greet, okay? And uh, it's not coming from the global variable, it's coming from this because in this example, we don't have the global variable, right? But then what happens here when I print console log to greet, okay, after executing this function, uh, what will be the output for this one, line number six? I want you guys to answer. What will be the output of line number six? Undefined? Reference error? Yes, it's not undefined because here we don't have a variable to be hoisted, right? There's no variable called greet outside of this function, right? So then it's going to throw error. So this will be the output, reference error, greet is not defined. That is how it is, okay? Let me go back to this. <clears throat> so what happened was when I call this function, anything inside the function gets executed, right? So inside the function, you have access to this variable, right? So when this console log is executing from within the function, it has access to the variable. But when you call this, variable outside of that function, now it doesn't have the uh, access to this particular local variable. Local variable is only local to that particular function, right? So that is the reason why it says, oh, I don't find any greet uh, global variable here. So I don't know. So I throw an error. That's it, right? So which is why we see a reference error being thrown. During the execution phase, local variables can only be accessed and modified within the same scope, right? It cannot be used outside of that scope. You can have multiple local scopes within the global scope. Each local scope is an isolated entity. So variables that belong to a scope is confined to that uh, specific scope. Let's see an example to understand that. Okay, so if I have multiple functions, okay, whatever variable that I have within that function will be only available to that particular function. Like in this case, this greet variable is local to this particular function, right? So first, Outside of the function, you have global scope, but in global scope, I don't have any variable defined in this example. But when I create this function, I create a, a local scope also, 
I mean, I don't create, but by default, it gets created. So in the local scope, I have a new variable called greet, right? Scoped to local scope, right? Now here it is accessible, accessible from the local scope because I'm using it within the function. Now, when I create another function, so what happens is it is creating another scope, local scope two, right? But now if I use greet here, this local scope cannot call uh, this local scope. It, will, it won't work like that. But if it was present in the global scope, I can go it like, you know, I told you before, if, what it will do is when I print this greet here in this function, it will say, hey, let's find the greet uh, variable here within this function. So that is how first it will search. So here it won't be able to find it, right? It will say, oh, there's no variable here. Okay, then let me go one step up and search in the global scope. So it goes one step up and sees in the global scope and there also there's no global variable. So it will throw error. It says no reference error here. Okay, because it's not accessible, right? So that's the point I'm trying to make here. So every function, when it gets created, it has its own local scope, right? But it also has a reference to the global scope, which means the parent scope. But in case, if this function, uh, sorry, this function was created within the previous function, then it might be able to access, right? It has access to the parent scope, but, but not the siblings. Like right now, these two functions are siblings to the parent global scope. Right, so you can't access siblings variable. That is not going to work, right? So that is how it is. So what happens when say hello gets uh, called? This function is in the memory already. So this console log gets executed with hello being printed because it's accessible. But then when change greet gets called, when this function gets called, here when I type hello uh, console greet, greet value is not available inside this uh, scope inside this function or it's not available inside the global scope also. So that is why we throw, we see an error. That is how it is, okay? I think it's getting time, so I'll just skip through some exercise. But you can you can do it, okay? Mm. This one, I will maybe I'll put, it, put this up for you to um, look at it later. Okay, so here, uh, possible confusions. Let's look at this as an example. Okay, just take a look at this. This is the same as the previous one. Okay, <clears throat> okay. Anyway, I'll go through this. This was the output for the previous function. Okay, hello, undefined, co, and hello. Let's see how that got worked. Right. So first, in the global scope, there's no. Uh, I mean, there's only one global variable where greet equal to hello. We have created this. Right. It's in the scope to the global. Now, when I create another function here there's a new local scope which is created and inside this i'm calling greet okay and then we have another variable greet created within this thing okay then we have lo console log okay i think you should look at this more carefully because there is a small twist here okay and then you have a console log here outside of that function and then i'm calling say hi and after say hi, I have uh, this particular function. Okay. If you don't want to look at this comment, maybe I can go back to this one. Okay. Let's see this. This is much cleaner, right? So what happens here is first this variable is hoisted with undefined, right? But then after execution, uh, hello will be assigned to it. This function is also hoisted, so this will work. So now first thing that I get executed is this one. So console dot log one colon greet will be printed. So one colon greet value will be this one, hello. So one colon hello is printed as the first output, then say hi is being executed, right? So say hi is also there in the memory. So when you look at say hi, this first line gets printed. So two colon greet. So the greet value here is um, what will happen. So within the scope, okay, just look very carefully here. Within the scope, what happens is this variable is hoisted, right? So this variable goes on top of this console log. So when I print greet here, I'm not going to see this hello here. I'm, not, I'm going to see this one here. I mean, not this one. It's going to be hoisted. So uh, the value will be undefined here in this case. Okay. So this var, var greet will be hoisted. So here, this greet will look at the variable within the local scope first, right? I told you. First thing it look at in, look at is the local scope. And if it's not found, then only it goes to the parent scope. That is the global scope in this case, right? So here, what happens? 
when it looks for the local variable, it is able to see this. Ah, yes, this one was pasted. So var greet equal to undefined will be printed here because we have not executed the line number four yet, right? So this greet will be undefined. Then what happens? Then it is assigned. When it comes to line number four, it assigns CIO as value. And now when I have console.log three colon greet will print this value, CIO, CIO. And then after that, right? Say hi has completely got executed. Now it comes to console log this one four colon greet now at this point what happens greet is going to be printed from the global scope because this greet does not have access to the function scope right so it cannot know that this is being uh, updated right so this is going to print the parent scope so that is how it is right? hello undefined show and hello right are you able to understand that or is it any is, it, is there any confusion Change greet is called from say hello. Oh, you're talking about previous example, huh? Sorry, I missed that. I, but I covered that, I think. Yes, I think, correct. Mm -hmm. Okay, folks, are you clear? Just print, uh, type yes if you are clear with this. So that I'm, I can continue. Ah, okay, thank you, Shahul. Yeah, cool, cool, awesome. I'll, I'll com complete it in a while, okay? We'll go faster and we'll finish it. Just give me another probably 15 minutes, we'll get it done. Okay, there's another thing called as execution context, right? Um, so this is the definition basically. Execution context is an abstract, con uh, abstract concept that holds information about the environment within which the current code is being executed. Okay, these definitions won't help you. Maybe pictures and uh, uh, code might explain it better. So I'll come to that later, okay? So, but this is a common confusion. People think that execution context is same as the scope. No, it's not that, right? Execution context is different from scope, okay? So when JavaScript engine starts to read code, the global execution context is created before any code is executed. We know that already. I mean, I'm just brushing up on those things. The global execution context is created uh, before the code is executed. That is point number one. Point number two is whenever a function is executed, a new execution context gets created. Like when an, uh, I told you that there's a new scope getting created, right? Similarly, there's a new context also getting created when a function is executed, right? Scope is created during, I mean, uh, memory creation phase, okay? It's not done during the execution phase. This execution context is created during execution phase. That is the difference, okay? Every con execution context provides this keyword also, which points to an object to which the current code that's being executed belong to. So this keyword, right, that is also a, a topic for a big discussion because people get confused with it often, right? But the point that you should remember is the global execution context is created any is created before any code is executed. Whenever a function is executed, a new context also gets created. So whenever a new function is executed, not when the function is declared, when the function is executed, a new execution context is created, okay? We'll talk about that. Don't worry if you are confused. Okay, try this as an example. Okay, this example might give you some idea, right? So now what happens is, um, this we are looking at execution context, okay? So here the code that is going to be executed is this particular function. So the execution context means the, the value that is available to me at this particular line, seven, okay? When this function gets executed, what are the information that I have here, right? So where am I calling this function? Um, that defines the execution context. So when this function gets called, it is creating a new execution context which has some inf information. So this keyword points to an object there, right? So now in this example, this function is invoked or executed in the global scope, right? So since it's getting invoked in the global scope, the information that, that this keyword points to is the global here, right? So what happens here when you see, when you run this function, right? So what will happen? This function gets called. The first console.log gets printed. So the value will be this one, global this colon. And then here, this global this is this value, which is pointing to the current this, okay? So this at this keyword, in this line means it's in the global scope, right? So don't get confused. Let's uh, just look, go over it, okay? So don't worry. I will. I'll show some other code also. We'll get clarified. So first, what I'm doing is 
I'm giving this, I'm assigning this keyword to global this so that it will store the value that was present inside this keyword during the global uh, execution context, right? First, you have the global execution context. So we'll see that value. Okay, that value is going to point to the window object, like we saw in the console log, right? I mean, we saw in the developer console, Chrome developer console, right? So when I type this, this is automatically pointing to um, window by default, right? So now when I call this inside the function, let me see what will happen. So global this, I'm storing this global this, which is pointing to the window. And then next line is, uh, again, I'm, I'm trying to print this, keyword inside the function call, right? So this value, what is the value of this particular keyword will be now since it's inside the function, okay? People might be assuming that, okay, this is inside a function, so maybe this has a this has something connected to the function, right? Um, but what we miss here is this is a function declaration. This is inside a function declaration, but the execution context only depends on the place where it's executed, right? So when this function gets executed, it is getting executed in the global scope, right? So this value, even if it's inside the function, it is still going to point to where it was getting executed. So it's executing in the global. So this value in the global scope is the same as this value inside the function scope. So that is why in the next line, I'm going to compare these two. Global this, which was found here, outer, outside of my function, and the, this keyword found inside my function, I'm comparing these two. And when I see it is going to print true because always this keyword, it depends on where the function is called, okay? So my function call was uh, called in the global scenario. So it got the global object here. But instead, if I had some other object here, let's say, you know, my object dot my function or some other function there, okay? Um, another function dot my function or something like that. If I had something before this function call, right? If I had my object dot my function, then this value inside this function will change. Okay, we'll look at that. Okay, just give me a minute. Okay, here, I think I've explained this already, I'm just skipping that part. So what exactly is execution context? You might be wondering. This is the definition. So we'll come back to that again, okay? So what happens during that phase is in the memory creation, first is the creation of scope, okay? A scope is getting created. And then uh, after creating a scope, scope chains are created, right? So you know about the scope, right? Scope is nothing but uh, where a particular variable or you know function is available, accessible, right? So similarly, you have to create a scope chain. JavaScript engine creates a scope chain. And then there's another thing, determination of the value of this. This also happens within the memory creation phase. Right? So when creating a scope happens, I told you, right? Scope is nothing but where to look for things. That is what scope defines. Like if there's a variable, scope tells you where exactly to find that variable. If there's a function, where should I look for that function in that scope? That is what we mean by scope. Okay? And this creating of scope happens, you know, hoisting also happens at this particular stage. See, hoisting is performed at this stage. So when you allocate, when you create a scope, Hosting also takes place in the same thing. So both of these things happen in the memory allocation space, not in the execution space, right? Now, an execution context needs to know about its own scope. Okay, we can skip this part. Definition might be a little thing. Let's look at our example, okay? Mm. So in this uh, picture, this this uh, small box, right? Like there is two, three different rectangle box placed inside a stack. This is a stack actually. So this is a call stack, actually. You can call it a call stack or you can call it an execution stack, right? So what happens is first when I, uh, by default here, the first box that goes into it is the global context. And then on top of that, there's another function that goes in. Then on top of that, there's another function that is there, uh, which is called. So every function call will create a new box on top of it. It will be pushed into the call stack, right? So in the global context, which is in the first box, First box is the global context, right? So when the first box got inserted by default by the JavaScript engine, that is where global execution context also gets created. And then in the next next box, when a function gets pushed in, a function execution context gets created there, right? So in the global context, what are the information that are available to me? I have global object and I have this object. So this object is pointing to the global object. And one more thing that you should remember is always this keyword 
will only point to a object okay it will not point to anything else it's always going to point to an object in this case the object that we have is global object window object right and in node.js it will be global object in the browser it will be window object right so this if you type this it is going to point to the thing that we saw earlier right so i'm just going to brush up on call stack also so let's say these are the functions that are getting called first okay so now i have function print name which returns magesh and then function sign name uh, these are all function declaration but the first thing that's getting into the uh, call stack will be this function okay so first when the call stack gets executed uh, i'm going to create a global context first okay global context gets pushed into the call stack first and then second will be this function and then third is when this function gets executed this function is getting called right so this will be pushed on top of that and then this will be pushed on top of that right that's how the call stack is going to work so like this this is the call stack right first is the global context which got pushed into and then the same my name function got pushed into and then find name and then print name so uh, this is how the call stack uh, is being pushed right all the functions are getting pushed okay so execution context if you want to understand the execution context better you can look at this right example okay um so here it's a beautiful analogy like you can use this so every time when this box is created first one is global other things are all function scope right so all these function blocks when it's getting created it is going to create a new execution context on its own right each of this box has its own execution context execution context can be thought of as a separate planet on its own right so inside this planet you have certain uh, information available to you that can only be accessed here right and this this planet has some information that is available here but this planet has access to this planet because it's global right but not the other planets but this is how execution context is so every block every function when it's executed remember not when declared only when a function is executed this execution context gets created this planet gets created and in that planet there will be uh, some options available to it information available to it that could be variables so when this point print name is executed i will see what are the variables that i have access to what are the other function that i have access to everything is found inside this planet and at this point when find name is executed i have some information in this planet so like that so execution context is these planets okay for you to remember in the future okay so scope chain scope chain is like this right so this is a global scope like outside of the functions right and then within a function there's another function call right so global scope has a function and that function has another function so right so there's three different scope now what happens is this child function this is green color box green color box also has a pointer to the a reference to the previous scope which is the parent scope that is this orange color box and this orange color box will also point to a parent scope which is the uh, blue color box this is called the scope chain right it's connected these three scopes are connected by a chain that's why they call it scope chain but but it's going to work like this it's going to go from the child to the parent not from the other way not from parent to child it's going to go from child to parent so child is going to have a reference to this parent and this child will have reference to his, his parents uh, this one right like that so i can call all the variables that are there in the parent here and similarly i can call all the variables that are there in this particular parent here that's how it works so this is how the scope chain works right okay um let me see if there's a better example for you to show um let's ah okay <coughs> scope chain um let's look at this one okay so here what happens when console.log is printed okay one is coming from this so this particular variable was foisted so it is undefined first right so this one was undefined now console log 2 is printed so now two variable it's going to search inside the global scope because all these first three line console log is present inside the global scope right so it's going to only search like i told you it's going to only search through this particular thing and it's going to look into the parent okay so here we don't have a parent uh, reference here because this is the outermost scope so now it says okay i'm not able to find this variable so it throws a reference error then when you ask for three it is again going to search through this uh, thing and looks for a parent and there's nothing so reference error again right but now 
then what happens this function is declared and then this function is declared and then finally it executes my function which is this one so when this function gets executed right first thing what happens is console.log1 okay now one it say search is here hmm where is log1 i mean where is the variable one that's not found inside this variable i mean inside this function so it goes one step up because of the scope chain it has a chain attached right so it follows the chain and goes to the parent and says okay let me search here outside and then oh one is found and it's going to print one then the next line is console.log2 now it searches for two here this one is hoisted right only the left side is hoisted so two will be undefined at this point right and these are this is a local variable so this is found inside this function so it doesn't have to follow the chain and go look for outside of this function so it found it here and says okay undefined there's no value to it say undefined then console.3 comes here so now it's going to search inside the scope the local scope within the function and search for the variable called 3 3 is not found here so it goes one step up to the parent and search for 3 there there also it's not present so now it says oh no i'm not able to find reference error right so then where 2 was assigned a value here now equal to 2 now when you print console log 2 this right hand side value is available 2 is printed then you are executing my my other function so now coming back here now console dot log one what will it do it will search for the one variable within this block and says there is no variable like this so it will say okay let me go one step up and find in the previous scope previous scope is not this function it's the outer global scope right so it cannot go and look into this function this function is not its parent function it is a separate sibling function so it will not search here it will search in the outer parent which is the scope uh, global scope so here it can't find one it will throw error but here it's there one is there so one will be printed now now it will look for two two is also not available within this function so it goes one step up and search is there there it's not present so reference error so three in three what happens when it searches within this function this particular variable was hoisted right the assignment part is yet to execute so we only have hoisted this first so three is equal to undefined at this particular point so the execution context here no it's undefined here so it throws undefined and then variable variable 3 is assigned to 3 and then console dot 3 is going to print this value 3 that's it so this is how the scope chain works right so this particular function points to the previous scope which is the parent global scope in this case right not this function this these two functions are inside the same global scope but if this function i mean or this function was inside this other function then this function will be the parent right so always this global i mean the scope chain will only work from child to parent so child can connect a parent and ask for variable access and that can connect to the other parent so like that goes from top to bottom approach okay okay so now execution context again so here previously you know i had a similar example where we were checking this global this equal to this to see if it matches right so in the previous example what we saw was a function call was just made outside in the global scope and it was made plain it was not called on top of any object previously which is why that this pointing here was equal to the global object but now what happens the difference is we are calling it on top of my object right my method here is called on top of this my object right so now what happens the execution context now refers to not the global window object it is going to refer to this particular my object which is this one this object here right so this is how the execution context works execution context always points to where the function is called right in this case this function is called on my object if this my object was not present then it will be pointing to the global since there's no reference to it but if it is called on top of a object like this then uh, it is going to refer to this so this keyword will be equal to this here in this execution right so when this is called right this function uh, is inside my object my method is called this function is getting called now so this console log will be printed so the global this will be pointing to the outside scope right the window window object and then the inside this is going to be pointing to what this my object right it's not this inside the function it is going to point to this object right because we are calling it on this object so now when you compare uh global this equal to this it is going to say false okay because global this and this inside this function is not the same now right because this function is called on the my object so based on where it is executed the execution context changes 
right? So when the execution context changes, here it is referring to my object. So in the last line, I'm going to equivalent it to my object to see if it is true. The answer will be true, right? So it means my object is the thing that this points to in within this function, right? So this is the execution context. So this keyword, whenever an execution context is created for every function, this keyword will point to where it's executed, right? It doesn't matter where it's defined. It's defined inside this function, outside this function, it doesn't matter. Defin definition of this is not matter here. It depends on the execution. Where is this function called, right? If it is called on top of this object, the object will come into the picture. If it is called on something else, then that will become the this. Right, so that is how the execution context always referred to. So it's called execution context, not declaration context, right? So it depends on the execution always. So where execution happens on top of this object. So that becomes the this inside this particular function. But outside the function, if you print this, it's going to uh, refer to your global window, right? That is it. Okay, so this value, this gets set to a leading parent object of a function call. Right, so leading parent object in my case was this. So always you look to the left of your function, function call actually, okay, this is a function call. So what, if there's something to the left of your function call, then that is going to be the reference to this always. So don't get confused. If there is nothing in the left, then it gets assigned to the global uh, window object, right? But if there's something on the left, that will be the uh, reference for this, okay? So that's why I've written it. This gets set to a leading parent object of a function call. If there is no leading parent object, this defers to the global object, right? Yeah, so that's uh, that's about it. And there's another challenge for you. Here's a bit of confusion, right? So what happens here is, again, you might think like, you know, in the previous example, I said, it depends on what is there on the left side, right? So you might think that here in this example also, my object will be the value of this, which is not going to be the case. Why? Because here, when I'm, I'm not calling the method here, I'm just assigning this method using my object dot my method and call, putting it inside my function. But remember, I told you execution context depends on when it's executed, right? So when it's executed, which means you see this is two braces, this, is, this means it's getting called, right? So where is it called now? Here, is there anything on the left side to it? There's nothing. Right, so there's nothing here. So now this will also point to the global window object, right? So usually people would say, no, this will point to the my object, right? Because here it is my object dot my method. No, this is not going to work like that. Okay, but if I had, if I didn't have this last line, and if I used a function call here, if I use an open close braces here itself, which means I'm invoking the function at this point, then it goes to look in the left. Uh, if there's my object, then this value here inside will be my object. So it all depends on when it's getting executed. So in this case, execution is happening here and not here, right? So when I'm executing it here, what is to the left? There's nothing. So it is assigned to the global context, right? So this is how the execution context works, right? Are you able to understand it? Any questions here? So this is execution context refers to the this value, okay? That's why we are talking about this here. Right. So this value, this keyword's value will always be changing depending on where the function is called or what, uh, how it is called and all that, right? What is going to be before this function, right? That is how this keeps on changing. That is why people get confused. Wait, what? This keyword was pointing to the window object earlier. Now it is pointing to another object. How is it working? I don't know. But that is because it is always dependent on how it is executed and not how it is declared. People might think that, you know, hey, it's declared inside this function. So this point, this might be pointing to this particular function. No, it's not like that. This always depends on where it's called and how it's called, right? So now this is called in the global scenario with, the, with nothing on the left. So it is going to take up the global object. But if it was called here with my object, my method and open close braces here, if I called it here, then my object will be the this value, right? So that is how it is. This gets set to a leading parent object of a function at the time of execution, right? At the time of execution, not during the declaration. Should be very clear on that. So not when it's created. The, this value doesn't get set to a parent object when it is getting created or referenced, right? In the example, this was getting just referenced, 
right? When it's getting reference, it doesn't work like that. It's only working when it's invoked, when it's called, right? Right, I hope you understand that. Cool. So we talked about, um, okay, I think this one is not necessary. Okay. Lexical is also the same thing, like, you know, um, the scope chain. Lexical is called, also known as the static uh, scope, right? Lexical scope means static scope, which means the scope gets created during the uh, compiling phase. Right, when it's getting interpreted, it's getting created. This entire scope gets created. So you know where, which particular uh, function has access to what particular variable, right? That's how it is. Okay, let me see if I can take you back to, I think we are almost done. Um, let me see. Yeah, so this one, right? So in a lexical scope, what happens is, <clears throat> so there is a parent scope that gets created first, the global scope, and then that has another function that is defined. So that creates a new scope. And this parent now, I mean, this function has another function within it. So that will have one more scope. So if I have one more function inside this, it's going to create one more scope. Like this, this goes on, right? The scope chain continues like this. So in a lexical environment, this is how it is, right? So always the access is limited. In a lexical scoping, this access is always limited to this box, right? And access to this orange box is limited within this box in the lexical environment, right? If it was not a lexical environment, then this access might change actually. But in a lexical uh, case, which is static scoping, right? Um, so here it will always be limited. So whatever is inside this box, I have access to and and a parent scope also, scope chain, right? But I cannot access the one that is below below this box, right? So this function cannot go and call function from this box, right? It won't work like that. So that is how it is. So that is how the lexical environment works. Another good example for lexical environment is, let's say you go into a building, let's say we are in a very old era where you don't have a phone call or, you know, you don't have phones, mobile phones. So what happens is you go into a building searching for your friend, Right. So what you do is you get to the bottom of the floor and then you go ask the receptionist, where is your friend? And then he points to you to this floor. Okay, go search within this floor. Let's say here, let's go search within this floor. Okay, in the ground floor, you uh, you don't see your friend there. And then you go one step up, you go to the first floor and then search there. And then if he's not there in the first floor, then you go to the uh, second floor, right? And then you go see if your friend is there. That's how you go, right? You go from the bottom to the top. That is how this thing works. This lexical environment works. You take it from the bottom to top, not from the top to bottom approach, right? Anything that is there in that parent can be accessible in the bottom, but not the other way around. Okay. So, yeah. So, I hope you understood everything. If you have any questions, you can ask. I mean, we are done. Okay. I wanted to close it earlier, but I think we, uh, we have... Uh, to take it towards 1.5 hours, one and a half hours. Right, folks? I'm done. Any QAs? Like we can take a few QAs or we can end it. What will be the value of this uh, global scope when we don't execute in browser window? It doesn't take the value of window object, right? Yes, if you don't execute it in window browser, which means you are executing it in from the Node.js perspective, right? In Node.js, there's no, uh, there is a global object there, right? So you don't have the window object, but you have a global object there. But if you are using, if you are using a, a compiler, a trans compiler, right, uh, to compile your JavaScript code, then you won't be able to find. This will be undefined actually. If you simply type this with a compiler then it will throw undefined in a, because it's in strict mode. In strict mode, this will not be assigned because you're not explicitly saying, you know, this is the value. So since it's not explicit, this will be equal to undefined in strict mode. But in a normal browser, browser has this thing, you know, like Chrome browser or Firefox browser, it kind of says, okay, man, this guy has made some mistake. Let's fix it. So browser will fix it. Browser will say this value is not assigned yet. So I'm assigning it to global. Right? But if you run it outside of the browser, you will not get the global object. It will throw undefined error. That is how it is. Right? Yeah, your question is valid, uh, Vijay. Awesome. Okay, guys, any other questions? So I just wanted to talk about these things with examples 
so that you could understand uh, how scope works and how lexical environment works and you know the context and etc this value main main thing was the this value for you to understand right if you had more time i could have shown you more example but uh, because of this limitation i am stopping here right so i hope you understood it i will i will share the ppt okay i mean i will share a website this is just a web presentation uh, it is created using react js so i will share it online maybe uh, you know the mozilla team will share it with you okay mm. so how is it guys like did you found find this helpful was it good just give me your feedback so i can improve on my next session because i'm just working on this it's a very hard topic you know the scope and all that we're well, talking about it uh, and especially when doing it online becomes a little difficult um without example it is very very difficult that's why i got some very simple example that i can show you right all right ashley are you there do you want to take over or shall we close it yeah i'll take over yeah mm -hmm. okay and folks if you want to uh if you want to like uh, contact me you can um, you know find me as imagesh on social network okay at imagesh on twitter facebook you can find it and follow me and if you want any help like you can reach out to me if you have any doubts or if you want to if you have any questions you can reach out to me online okay separately okay thank you sarona thank you for your feedback ashley over to you uh, so it was really a great session thank you manish for accepting our invitation again and doing the part 2 session and you audience were really amazing such a interactive audience you supported him to take this session to a different extent and now in the qa tab like i have broadcasted a message for you guys to give a feedback please to take two or three minutes and give us a feedback this is for us to improve in what are the areas that we have to work on before we go up with the next session and uh, for your reference i'll be sharing all the uh, uh, links of the social media sites of both mozilla and uh, tn as well as facebook developer circle now so you can follow us through all this just a minute i'll share you now so as i said in the introduction this is a recorded session and you will find the recording uh, in our official youtube channel mozilla tn's official youtube channel as well as in facebook uh, developer circles chennai page uh, before monday so we will make sure that it reaches you guys before monday so once again thank you for spending your time with us and it was really great thank you guys thank you